This is St. Vincent's Health Talk, a video magazine with the latest news and developments from St. Vincent's Health Services. In this edition, we celebrate recent successes in our emergency department, oncology, and women's imaging areas, as well as in our family birthing center, and we welcome our new robot. At St. Vincent's, we're investing in the future and working hard to be the hospital of choice for patients, employees, and physicians. Now let's turn to our news summary. We begin this edition of Health Talk discussing safety, just as we do each morning in Safety Huddle and at the beginning of each meeting at the Medical Center. In the past few months, the Medical Center has impressively increased awareness about safety with the rollout of numerous tools which will help us become a high reliable organization. Kerry Eaton, Chief Administrative Officer, discusses why safety is at the core of all that we do. Well, high reliability organization is really just what it says it is. It's that you should be able to rely on the organization to do the right things for patients all the time, not just some of the time. And there are certain behaviors that are associated with high reliability organizations. One of the things that we learned was that there's behaviors associated with, for example, always making sure that patients don't get an infection when they're on a ventilator. And there's maybe four or five things that if we do it every time, we can make sure patients don't get infections on ventilators, where we used to think that that was sort of the cost of being on a ventilator, that some people would just get um, ventilator-associated pneumonias. Now we found out that it, there are certain behaviors that if you practice them regularly and reliably, you can keep patients safe. And if you do this all the time, you can reliably um, not have a safety event for a patient when you're in the hospital. So our work has been to teach patients, or to teach our patients, our families, but mostly our employees, how to practice these safe behaviors so that we don't have unexpected adverse events for patients that are within our own control. One of the elements of being a high reliable organization is to reward and recognize our safety heroes. In this episode of Health Talk, Carrie shares the story of safety hero Nerva Dimisthine, chief technologist of nuclear medicine at St. Vincent's. You know, one of the wonderful things about this work is one of the things we're working on is to tell stories because people learn through stories and those behaviors then can be re repeated. And Nerva was taking care of a patient who ha had had a baby five months prior and had stopped nursing and she needed a, an x-ray, a special kind of x-ray called a HIDA scan to look at her gallbladder. And we always want to make sure when we x-ray any women of childbearing age that they're not pregnant. So Nerva asked the patient if she could be pregnant and she said she couldn't be. But Ner Nerva wasn't convinced because of her symptoms and insisted that before the patient be tested that she didn't want to assume that she could not be pregnant. So Nerva insisted on the test and lo and behold when they found out, uh, when they did the test, the patient found out that she was in fact pregnant and so she wasn't a candidate for that particular test. It was a wonderful catch, a great catch on Nervous um, Point uh, on her part. And, and what it makes you realize is that it's a highly reliable behavior not to make assumptions in healthcare, to not think that it's probably okay, but to never proceed unless, in fact, you know that it's okay. A perfect example of STAR, which stands for Stop, Think, Act, Review. Nervous actions protected the patient's pregnancy and prevented harm to the fetus. And now on to our feature stories. Today the Medical Center's emergency department is featuring more than a new state-of-the-art physical plant. Coinciding with the naming of the Michael J. Daly Center for Emergency and Trauma Care was the implementation of a minimal weight pilot program which has boasted impressive results thus far. Patients are no longer experiencing anxiety related to long wait times or becoming so frustrated that they leave without being seen. Thus, the patient experience in the ED has resulted in dramatically improved patient satisfaction and safety scores. Dr. Jody Girard, Chairman of Emergency Medicine, explains the transformation of care in the ED. In the past, a patient would come into a triage nurse, would get triaged, would come to a busy waiting room and wait. Then they would go see the physician, come back to the waiting room and wait. Then they would go to the registration booth, be registered, come back to the waiting room and wait. Then they would see a tri uh, the final nurse get their instructions, their treatment, their discharges, their prescriptions, 
and wait until discharge. Now all of that happens at one time. Both Dr. Herman, a patient, the, registration, the registrar, the nurse, sees a patient in, in, at one time. And so all of that duplication of effort is minimized. And as a result of that, we've seen dramatic changes in both patient satisfaction, the waiting time to see a provider, the waiting time to get upstairs, the growth in the revenue and in the volume of the emergency department as a whole, and if you look to your right, an empty waiting room. As of this filming, the emergency department has reduced door-to-doctor time from 120 minutes to 29 minutes, while also decreasing the percentage of patients who left without being seen from 3.9% to 0.5% since the inception of the program. One of the things we are proudest of is the decline in what we call serious safety events in the emergency department. Serious safety events uh, occur when a patient either becomes harmed or dies as a result of medical error. In the emergency department prior to the rollout of this team, uh, we were seeing approximately eight serious safety events per year. That's an extraordinarily high number. I'm proud to say that since the beginning of this program, that has diminished to three and we have seen uh, none uh, in the past 30 days. Unfortunately, we have had one in the past 120 days. But that is a significant decline uh, compared to the way it was in the past. St. Vincent's recently became the first hospital in Fairfield County to achieve accreditation as a baby-friendly hospital by the World Health Organization and the United Nations Children's Fund. Joining only two other Connecticut hospitals with this designation, St. Vincent's implemented a complex program which took years to achieve. Dr. William Cusick, chair of OBGYN, discusses the significance of baby-friendly accreditation. The baby friendly designation uh, helps put us out in front of the, of the curve in allowing our services and our facilities and our systems here at St. Vincent's Hospital to be set up in a way that can really encourage uh, breastfeeding, that, that allows moms who want to breastfeed and breastfeed exclusively to do so. Uh, and we really had to sort of war work, rework our system here, both as it relates to how we handle their moms after delivery. Um, the pediatricians did a lot of work in changing the way they practice and how they like to see and, and take care of their neonates. And really a lot of education for adult, both the doctors and the moms to help them understand um, sort of the expectation, uh, why it is that we were uh, encouraging rooming in or we're mo keeping moms and babies together. Um, teaching our visitors that we don't have a big room with a lot of babies now, that babies want to be with their mommies. Uh, mommies need to see the babies so they can understand the cues for breastfeeding all these things. So a lot of systems, processes and changes, a lot of getting people to rethink the patterns of practice and move them back to doing what's best for the mom and the baby, keeping them together. In addition to the staff's emphasis on providing optimal levels of care in breastfeeding and mother-infant bonding, St. Vincent's also offers advanced care to newborns who are premature or have special needs. Dr. Shruti Gupta, Vice Chair of Pediatrics, discusses the center's neonatology services. While we always hope that pregnant moms would deliver full term, but um, in the event that they do deliver prematurely or if they deliver a sick infant, we're able to take care of those babies here. Uh, those babies uh, that we take care of are uh, essentially more than 30 weeks gestation. We do have a full-time neonatology staff, so if babies were born prematurely, even before 30 weeks, we are able to handle them, then we would transport them to uh, a tertiary care center uh, because we are essentially a level two center taking care of babies more than 30 weeks gestation. Uh, with the baby-friendly accreditation, um, our family-centered care model really ties in very well. We do try to keep our babies and moms together as much as we can. Uh, they're completely involved in the baby's care and um, th we do have a percentage of, uh, a large percentage of moms uh, leaving breastfeeding the newborn completely, uh, which is a big thing for a NICU because most NICUs just believe in premature formulas.
representing a milestone that not many hospitals have yet attained. St. Vincent's has earned the Breast Center of Excellence designation from the National Accreditation Program for Breast Cancer. Developed by the American College of Surgeons, this designation points to a multidisciplinary approach that offers the highest quality of care and monitoring of patients with disease of the breast. Dr. Kelly Harkins, Medical Director of the SWIM Women's Imaging Center, discusses the significance of the designation. Well, it's a very uh, important designation and only a few hospitals around the country actually receive this designation and there are very strict criteria in order to be designated a breast center of excellence and what they look at is a comprehensive care plan for patient management and they look at everything from our diagnostic equipment to detect tumors to our multidisciplinary approach to how we treat patients with breast cancer and all of these options that we give to the patients and we have a, a nurse navigator that helps the patients from the time of diagnosis until they receive their treatment and then beyond. So we work together closely as a team and we use that communication skills and our tools to actually uh, plan a very uh, comprehensive treatment plan for every patient which gives much better outcomes. St. Vincent's surgeon, Anthe Demestahas, who played a major role in obtaining the designation, describes the services offered at St. Vincent's Family Health Center to breast cancer patients. We now provide uh, a separate breast clinic that is devoted purely to breast treatment, both benign and malignant disease, um, to the underinsured or uninsured in our community. We run this clinic twice a month um, at the Family Health Center and it is overseen by me and the residents uh, when available in order to uh, evaluate patients. Because we use the same standards for the patients in the Family Health Center just as we do to our private patients that come into the hospital. We also then provide patient education, family education, and also support services, including um, post-mastectomy bra fittings and other um, specialty items that may be necessary for breast cancer patients. Dr. Harkins, Dr. Domestahas, and other breast surgeons are excited about the opportunities to continue to bring state-of-the-art breast care to St. Vincent's patients. St. Vincent's welcomed the intuitive surgical Da Vinci SI surgical system in August. The Da Vinci robot is approved by the FDA for multiple surgical procedures in the specialties of urology, gynecology, general surgery, cardiothoracic surgery, and otolaryngology. Part of the robot's uniqueness lies in the fact that unlike most surgical instruments, it can enhance human capability. Chairman of Surgery, Dr. Douglas Ross, explains the advantages of this robotic technology for patients. Well, the, this Da Vinci robot is the latest model of the Da Vinci. It provides a high-definition 3D images through laparoscope. So, in fact, we get a much better picture even than normal laparoscopic uh, surgery. So that's number one. So the, even the camera and the pictures coming out of the machine are much better than we've ever seen before. But in addition to that, this robot, because of its very small arms, can actually work inside the body in areas that are really very, very difficult for our conventional laparoscopic uh, surgeons to get to and to work in. It provides a uh, much more uh, delicate and much more finesse moves uh, in the body than normally could be done with the uh, laparoscopic instrumentation. So this really helps both uh, create a safer environment for the patient. If surgery can be done eventually uh, faster in terms of the patient's recovery. The patient can get out of the hospital a lot faster, does not need to be opened up, uh, have a large incision in their body made in order to do some very sophisticated surgery. So we're very excited to have the robot. Training began in August and will continue so St. Vincent's can offer patients a full complement of surgical interventions with the assistance of Da Vinci. Thanks for watching St. Vincent's Health Talk. We leave you with some further images of our beautiful medical center and the staff who provide state-of-the-art care every day.